how are you going to stay warm if your power goes out this winter? Now, it seems like every single winter for the last couple of years, some state has lost power for a major percentage of their population during the winter. Last year, if you can remember, it was Texas that lost power. Many parts of the state went without power for up to 10 plus days in the dead of winter. Recently, at the time of this recording, some parts of the Northwest were without power. Parts of California, Oregon, Washington State had a major snowstorm and it knocked out the power. So for today's video, I'm trying to give you guys some tips on how to stay warm in case you lose power during the winter time. So number five is wear some damn clothes. I can't tell you how many videos I watched last year of people running around in Texas in damn booty shorts and tank tops and wondering why they were cold. We see the same thing here during the winter time girls try to run around looking all cute in their booty shorts and their tank tops sitting there freaking shivering wondering why they're cold when it's 15 degrees outside listen you can look cute or you can be warm you can't be both put some damn clothes on now for us older individuals that don't care if we look cute or not uh, this might not apply to some of us so let's move on to number four so number four is create a micro environment I'm filming this on my front porch. Right behind me is my living room. In that living room, I have a backup heat system on the wall, and that heat system works without power. So if our power went out, hey, we have backup heat. But let's say we didn't have that. Let's say we were like many of y'all and either have electric heat or no backup systems. How would we stay warm? Well, instead of trying to find a way to heat up the entire house, we would all move into one bedroom we would move into one bedroom that everyone fits into. Maybe either mine and my wife's bedroom or maybe the baby's room and we would move our bed into it or at least, you know, a blow up air mattress. What we would do is then create a micro environment using plastic sheeting, plastic tarps, blankets, towels, it doesn't really matter, but you want to seal that room off. That way, any heat you create stays within that room. You want to put some plastic sheeting over your windows or blankets. You want to kind of stuff some blankets up under the doors. And that way, none of your warm air is getting out and none of the cold air is getting in. I watch the Provident Prepper a lot and one of the micro environments they create. Sorry about the noise in the background, guys. We got some construction going on on the property beside us. But I watch the Provident Prepper a lot. And one of the micro environments they create is using a tent. They stuffed all of their children into one tent and they played a scenario where they went without power in the wintertime. That tent also created a micro environment. It is a lot easier warming up one bedroom of a house or even a tent than it is trying to heat up the entire house. You want to pick a space that all of the people that are going to be in your house can fit in. I can fit in my laundry room and I can warm that up, but um, not everyone can fit in there with me. It wouldn't be very comfortable. So make sure your micro environment is big enough for everyone that's in your household to stay in. Number three is portable heat systems. Portable heat means kerosene heaters, means Mr. Buddy propane heaters, things of that nature. Now be careful when using kerosene or propane inside of your homes. I have used both kerosene and propane since I was knee high to a grasshopper. We used to heat our homes with kerosene. My grandma lived without power for 20 plus years. That's all she could use. We've used propane. This house is heated by propane. There's a lot of people that will tell you don't burn kerosene inside and don't burn propane inside and those people are wrong. You can, in fact, burn both kerosene and propane inside of your homes safely carefully with the proper precautions. Both a kerosene and propane do give off carbon monoxide. Kerosene especially gives off a lot of smoke, a lot of fumes, a lot of carbon monoxide. So if you have a kerosene heater, you don't have to pile up in one small bedroom that all of y'all barely fit in. We don't want all your beds and all your mattresses piled up this close to the kerosene heater because they will melt, they will burn. So what I would do, and the same thing goes for Mr. Buddy Heater as well, 
You have a heat source, therefore you can heat up a larger room. Spread out. My living room would be a good example. I would spread out, put the kids on one side, put me on the other, put the kerosene heater in the middle. Now, if I was using the kerosene heater to heat up my home, would I still seal up my living room? Not nearly as much. What I would do is I would let that plastic sheeting vent. So I might roll up the bottom inch or two on both sides and let that cool air come in to the hot area and then let it flow out. So you can burn kerosene indoors safely. You can burn propane indoors safely. People do it every single day. You just have to be smart and you have to be safe about it. Both create flame hazards, both create burn hazards, and both create carbon monoxide. You can use them indoors. Be safe. A car can also be another microenvironment. Last year there was a bunch of people who left their cars in their garages and turned the heat on. Many of those people either had carbon monoxide poison or they died. Don't do that. Take the car outside or put the exhaust outside. Lift up your garage, back the car up, bring it down on the, the boot of your car, and then that way the exhaust is, is pointed outwards. Your car has its own fuel source, it has its own heat source, you can use it safely. Don't be a dummy and leave it running with a closed door garage. Don't do that. Number two, use every single blanket you own. I don't know about you guys, but in this house we have a ton of blankets. We have blankets for the living room, we have blankets for the baby's bedroom, we have two or three blankets on our bed, then we have the backup blanket, so we have a ton of blankets. If we were all piled up in one room trying to stay warm, every single blanket that I've ever owned, to include sleeping bags, would be in that room. You don't have to put every single one of those blankets on top of you while you sleep, but you can create a micro environment using the blankets, right? Build a little blanket for it like little kids used to do. You can put blankets over the tent. If you were using a tent as a micro environment, you can stuff blankets inside of them. Like I said, use all of them. If you're bundled up, you got a jacket on, a hoodie on, and sweater, and you've got every single blanket you own on top of you, you're going to survive. You're going to stay warm. Use all the blankets. The number one way to stay warm during some sort of winter power outage. Sleep with someone or sleep with something. Now, two people create more heat than a single person. And two people sleeping in the same bed under the same blankets is going to warm up the area a whole lot faster than a single person would. Now, if you have an ex-girlfriend, an ex-wife, an ex-husband, a dog, a bear, an alligator, I don't know, I don't care, bring them in that bed with you. If they're living under your roof, you should be sleeping in the same bed. Like I said, we have multiple children, all those kids would be in our bed. That way, all of our body heat is in one area. You don't have people sleeping in this room and people sleeping in that room and people sleeping over here trying to warm up three areas. You have everyone in one room, possibly even under one blanket, under one bed, sharing the warmth. Now I get it, maybe you don't want to sleep in the same bed as someone you might be unfamiliar with, like a neighbor. Cool. At least sleep in the same room. Two, three, four different body heats are going to heat up that room a lot better than one single person. Call your neighbors, call your friends, have everyone come over, sleep over in the same room. If you're comfortable with one another, sleep in the same bed. Everyone stay warm. So guys, I hope that if you find yourself in this situation, that these tips help you stay alive and stay warm. If they do, make sure to leave your situational comment down below. If you have any other tips that you want to add, leave them down below. What I recommend is going and stocking up on fuels, stocking up on blankets, good sleeping bags, you know, the zero degree, 15 degree sleeping bags, because those are going to help you out as well. Have portable heat sources, such as the Mr. Buddy heater, such as a kerosene heater, something that will provide you heat in an emergency situation. Stock up on that plastic sheeting to seal rooms off, to seal windows off. I hope all of y'all stay safe out there. If you are in an area that experiences a power outage during the winter time, make sure you post it in the comments below, and that way you can kind of tell your story. Guys, that's all I got for today. Again, if you have any other tips, leave them in the comments section. Hope y'all stay safe. Hope y'all stay have a good winter. And uh, yeah, that's all I got for today. See you out.